All right, so last week we looked at the genealogy of Jesus in uh, uh, the very first part of the Gospel of Matthew. And we talked through that, and it was a really neat time. It was really neat for me to be able to prepare for that. I know many of you, that was enlightening to you. And uh, today, whoa, today uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the miracle of the message. We're talking about the miracles of Christmas. And last week we, we looked at how the genealogy of Christ was miraculous. Miraculous that, that not only was Jesus from uh, the, the line of Abraham, which fulfilled the promise of God, but Jesus was from the line of David, which fulfilled uh, the prophecies uh, about the coming Messiah. And, uh, and then we saw that there are a lot of people in Jesus' uh, family tree who, who resemble us and, and who resemble people in our own families. It wasn't a perfect family tree by any means. And we took away from that that, look, God loves imperfect people and he loves to do great things through them. And uh, if you know that and are, are, uh, are tied to that message, then that ought to do your heart real good this morning because there's not a one of us in here who's perfect, are there? So uh, God loves us and he loves to do great things through us. This week, as I was thinking about the miracle of the message of Jesus, uh, I saw something earlier this week that really stuck with me, and it was a pretty amazing thing. Have you ever seen a family where somebody or multiple people in that family are hearing impaired and where someone has to know sign language in order to communicate with them? I saw that this week. I was in a restaurant, and I noticed that, and I just thought it was so cool. And I've seen that before, but there's just something really neat about watching someone do sign language, and, and watching a family communicate through that is just a really neat thing. So I found out that our own April Pomeroy knows how to do sign language. She knows how to speak sign language. So April, would you come forward and help me out with this part of the message? Y'all give April a hand. There you go. Come on, all the way up here, April. Yes, thank you so much. So April's going to help me, and she's going to help me show you and demonstrate for you what sign language is like. So uh, sign language is beautiful to watch. If you see someone communi communicating in this way, you, you will notice the fluid ability to talk with another and what's really amazing and really fun to watch is the, express, the expressions on the faces of those who are talking. Yes, great expressions. <laughs> it really is priceless. And as I've watched these conversations over the years, I've noticed and been particularly moved by watching parents talk to their children using sign language. One time when my kids were very young, we were observing a family who was speaking in sign language, and I was particularly moved by watching their parents. And I thought to myself, if my children had been born hearing impaired, I would learn sign language because I would want to be able to communicate with them. And I, I would want them to know that I love them. And I love them enough to learn their language. And I love them enough to be able to talk with them. And I love them enough to be able to show them God's love for them. And so learning sign language wouldn't be anything for me as a parent. It would just be what was right. It wouldn't be a burden. It would be an expression of love. And as I watched the deaf communicate with one another, I couldn't help but reflect upon the significance of that. We are here on earth, busy living our lives, pushing our own agendas, but deaf to God's voice. We don't hear what God is trying to say to us. God's been trying to communicate His message to us, but we aren't getting it. Rather than give up in frustration, God loves us so much 
that he desperately wants to reveal himself to us in ways that we can understand. So he sent his very own son to communicate his message in a way that he knew that we could understand. That's one of the true miracles of Christmas. That God would love us enough to communicate with us in a way that is undeniable. That he would use his only son as his message of love and salvation for his people. Y'all give April a hand. Thank you so much for helping us. Today I want to focus on the miracle of the message. That God sent Jesus to communicate His message in a way that we can understand. That Jesus, in a very real way, became God's sign language to us. That we couldn't hear what God was trying to do any other way. And so He sent His Son as a very real expression of His love for us. And so it made me think of a passage in Hebrews chapter 1. And it's a beautiful passage, and it really does detail out how God wanted to send His message to us in a way that we could understand. It says this, In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, and through whom also He made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. And after he had provided purification for our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. We see several things here, but there are two things in particular. The first is this. God speaks through history. God has spoken through history. That very first verse says, In the past God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. And we've been talking about this for for a long time now. For the last probably month or so, we've been talking about how the whole story of Christmas looks back at the Old Testament and sees how God has tried to communicate with His people at various times in various ways. Part of that was He used the prophets. Part of that was he used all kinds of things. I mean, here's just kind of a list of things that God used to speak to his people. He spoke to Moses through the burning bush. He, he spoke to the Israelites from the smoke and fire on the mountain. He spoke to Elijah in a still, small voice. He, smoked, he spoke to Isaiah in a vision in the temple. He spoke to Hosea through his family circumstances. To Amos in a basket of summer fruit. He spoke to Jeremiah through a potter's clay. He spoke to Joseph through dreams. And he spoke to Mary through an angel. God even spoke his message at one point in the Old Testament through a donkey. And you guys might say, well, that's not miraculous. We hear a donkey speak to us every Sunday. You know, that's true. But it's miraculous what God has used to speak to his people throughout history at various times and various ways. God has spoken through history. He's used visions and dreams. He's used angels. He's used symbols. He's used natural events. He's used many other means to speak to his people. And God has been speaking in history in a variety of places, in a variety of means, in order to make himself and his will known. And we talked about how what happened at the end of the Old Testament is... uh, The Old Testament comes to a close with the people of Israel being released from uh, bondage in Assyria. And they come back to Jerusalem and they begin to rebuild. But they are scattered people. They're broken people. And the Old Testament ends that way. And we talked about those 400 years of silence where the voice of God is not recorded among his people. And it was that time of waiting and that time of of silence. And it had to be a miserable time for for the people of Israel. And then that silence is broken. And that silence is broken through the coming of Jesus. 
God had been speaking, but His people hadn't been getting the message. I mean, he'd been speaking, he tried so many different ways and so many different people to be his voice and to share with his people, but they wouldn't turn from their ways and they wouldn't come to him. And it was like the people were deaf to his voice. And God broke that silence in a beautiful way, and that's really the second way that we see God speak. God speaks through Christ. And that's what this, this passage tells us. It says, In the past God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways, but in these last days He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things. And so He sent Jesus to speak to us. He sent Jesus to show us the way. That's why it says, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus, the the very message and essence of God, what Hebrews says here, the exact representation, He comes to us and and He breaks God's silence to His people. And God does it in in such an amazing way, doesn't He? This time it's not through a prophet, this time it's not through nature. This time it's not through uh, you know, some sort of natural disaster or a plague or anything like that. It's not through an angel. This time it's through His very Son, through Jesus. And so He sends His one and only Son, and He speaks to us. He communicates to us. And what is His message to us? Well, I mean, there are many places in the Scripture that we can find Jesus' message to us, but... 1 John 4, 8 to 10 seemed like as good a place as any for me to take you this morning. His message is this, whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So the message of Jesus is love. He's a love message from God. Jesus came to reveal God, and God is love. To make Him known to us in ways that we could finally understand. And and verse 3 of our text this morning says, The Son is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things, by his powerful word, and after he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So John's gospel describes Jesus as the word becoming flesh and living among us, and that word brought God's message of love to us. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. When Philip asked Jesus to show them the Father, you remember what Jesus said? John 14, 9, he says, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Jesus declares in John 10, 30, I and the Father are one. Jesus came to show us God. He came to show us the way. So we see that God has spoken through history. We see that God has spoken through Jesus. The third thing I want you to see today is that God speaks through us. God wants to speak through His people now. Those of us who have come to believe in Jesus, come to know Him... God wants to speak through us now. And we see that represented in so many places in Scripture, but I'm going to take you to several of them. Matthew 28, 18 to 20, it says this, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. So he's saying, look, 
This is coming from Jesus. He's saying, you're it. Now, you're the voice. That's right, tag. I'm going to ascend into heaven. I'm going to sit at the right hand of the Father. I'm going to intercede on your behalf. You're going to be my voice, my representative in the world now. You're going to share my love with the world. Mark 16, verses 15 to 16. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Again, you go and you be my voice. Luke 24, 46 to 48. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in His name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. We are to be the witnesses who go into the world and preach the Messiah. John 20, 21, again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And then Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We are those who are taking the gospel to the ends of the earth. God still wants to speak today, and He wants to use us to do so. His message has not changed. We don't need to make something up to be His message. His message is in His Word, but we are the voices that share it to the world. God speaks through history. God's spoken through His Son, and God wants to continue to speak through us today. Now, here's what I want you to see finally this morning. The miracle of the message is that it transforms. We've seen how God wants to speak, but the miracle of the message is that it transforms. It's not just the fact that God speaks to us today through the Holy Spirit or through His Word, or that He actually chooses to speak His message through us. The miracle is that the message has the power to transform our lives and the lives of everyone in the world. Christmas is the celebration of the greatest message ever proclaimed. I want you to remember this, this Christmas. Christmas is not your birthday. It's Jesus's. We celebrate Him during this time. It's not the time when you get your birthday presents. It's the time when you give Him as the present to the world. And you show others what He has done for you. That's the message that we proclaim at Christmas. And you can proclaim that message as you give each other gifts. You can, you can do that. That doesn't have to be a mutually exclusive thing. But just make sure that he is not overshadowed by the stuff. Make sure that the light is shining firmly and directly on him. He is the transforming message that God has given to the whole world. 2 Corinthians 2.18 says this, And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to transform you. And He wants to transform you into the likeness of Jesus. He wants to make you more and more like Christ. And so use this season as an opportunity to be about that. Not to be distracted by all the noise and the parties and the hustle and bustle and everything else, the presents and the gifts and the sales and all that good stuff. And that is so woven into our heart as, as Americans who have means, as people with resources. That is so woven into our hearts. But let's make sure that that's not the message this year. 
Now, we've been asking y'all to give a bunch of stuff this time of year. We ask you to, to give money so that we can relieve debt for, for those who are in poverty who, who are facing medical debt. And you did. And we've been asking you to bring stuffing. I don't know if you saw our video this week. Bring stuff. We need more stuff. But we've been asking you to bring stuffing so that we can help feed the needy in our community with, through Compassion Corsicana as they give out these uh, Christmas boxes to, to those who are needy. And we've been asking you to bring stuff to Navarro College so that we could do barbecue for them and feed, and feed folks over there. And we've been asking you to bring presents for our teachers at, at Navarro Elementary School and Corsicana High School so that we can provide them with, with an awesome gift that hopefully sends them the message that God loves them. But that's the point. The point is not that we're asking you to do all this stuff because, you know, we, we just like being busy this time of year. The point is we're asking you to do this stuff so that we can send a message to our community and our world, and that message is Jesus loves you. We want to send the miracle of the message to this world. None of these things are ends in and of themselves. They are means to an end. So as we give a gift, as we give a plate of barbecue, as we give relief from medical debt, that the message is a church that is connected to Jesus Christ did this for you. And our hope is that you would see him in this. Because he alone can bring you transformation. Jesus came so that God could reveal himself in a way to us that we could understand. Some of you in the past years have received a lot of messages. I mean, we're always getting messages from various different sources, right? And some of you have received messages that have changed your life. You heard the message from the doctor when he said, I'm sorry, it's cancer. You heard the message from your teenager. Mom and dad, I'm pregnant. You heard the message from your spouse. I don't love you anymore and I want a divorce. As a result of these messages and many others, your life has been changed. But in the midst of it all, there's another message. There's a message that for those of us who believe is the foundation and source of our life. It's the message that is a miracle. And it's a message that says something like this. Nothing whatsoever can separate you from my love. It's a message that says this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. It's a message that says this, Forgive those who mistreat you. It's a message that is so counter to every bad message that the world seeks to deliver to you. And there is hope infused in every word of it. And it's the message of Jesus. I went to a funeral this week for a 16-year-old boy who took his own life. And I saw the devastation that that decision had upon his family. And I saw something at that funeral that I've never seen before. I watched as that mom and dad, they, they began to play Amazing Grace over the sound system. And I watched that mom and dad stand up in, the room, in a room of full of people who, who just were overcome by emotion. 
Watch that mom and dad stand up and lift their hands and begin to sing to the Lord. They didn't care who else was in the room. They didn't care that they were crying so hard that as they sang, I mean, they didn't care. That was their moment to reflect that their lives had been changed by the message of Christ. And that even in the midst of that devastation, I can't imagine worse devastation. Even in the midst of that devastation, they were holding fast to the truth of Jesus. That is miraculous. Nothing else in this world can offer that. Nothing will. The message that we believe is miraculous. Let's celebrate it. No matter what we face, it is our only hope. Will you pray with me? Father, we thank you so much for the miracle of Jesus. We thank you for a message that is enduring. A message that says that you so loved us that you sent your one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. A message that says that you are love. And you sent your son to show us that love. And if we believe in him, we will be so overcome by that love that we'll be transformed by it. So continue your transformation project in us, Lord. And we thank you so much for, for sending us our very own sign language in the, in the person of Jesus. That when we couldn't understand you any other way, you made it crystal clear in him. The exact representation of your glory. May we trust him. May we allow him to shine bright this Christmas. Thank you, God, for the miracle of the transforming message of Jesus. Pray it all in his name. Amen.